That's the first picture that I remember in my life. I was four years old and standing in front of the TV in my parents' little house in Bavaria um, when the first man landed on the moon in 1969. And I announced that I want to become an astronaut and fly to the moon. This picture has changed the way we see the world today. It was the first time that we've seen our planet Earth from outside, the first time that we've seen how tiny it is as a part of the universe, and that we need to start taking care of this planet. From space, you don't see borders, you don't see walls, you just see one planet that we all share. And this image has triggered the first environmental movements in the 1960s that still go on today. What I did not know at that time was that actually in the 1960s, space leaders in the US at NASA claimed that women are not capable of flying into space at all. Even so, the Russians had proven with Valentina Tereshkova already in 1963 that women can survive in space. <laughs> it did take another 20 years until the first American woman flew into space. It was 1983 that Sally Ride became an astronaut and flew on board of the space shuttle. And only in 1991, the first European woman, an English lady, Helen Sharman, made it into space um, as a cosmonaut to the Russian Mir station. And then a lot of women followed also in Europe, Italian, French, um, Canadian, Japanese, Chinese, Korean, but no German woman has ever been in space until today. I grew up like a boy. Luckily, I didn't have an older brother. So uh, my father was a car mechanic and I was working with him in the garage. I could hold a screwdriver as soon as I could walk. And in my teenage times, I was working with him on repairing old cars because he loved to repair historic cars from the 1930s. And I was building my own motorbike with him. And I believed I could become everything, even an astronaut. What I did not know, that at that time in the 1970s in Germany, a woman still had to get permission from her husband if she wanted to take a job. The husband actually had to sign the employment contract, let alone if she wanted to become an astronaut and go to space. That law was only changed in 1977. I followed my career like a rocket. I studied aerospace engineering in Munich as the only woman in that class. I did my diploma thesis in Japan, working on a satellite project, which was super exciting because this little satellite there was going to the moon, and it was actually dropped on the moon at some point. So some things of part of my dream already became reality because something that I worked with was on the moon. And I was the only woman in that team. I started my first job at a space company in Munich, working with astronauts, again, super exciting. I was standing next to this rocket in Baikonur at the launch when the first uh, German astronaut flew to the Mir station, to the Russian space station. And I was the only woman in that team. Being the only woman never bothered me until about maybe 20 years later or something. My daughter was born in the meantime. My husband stayed at home when she was small to take care of her. I looked around and I realized I'm still the only woman in meetings, on boards, at conferences. And I wondered, what's going on here? Why is that happening? And I actively started to look around for the women. And I found them. Actually, in the space community, every woman is surrounded at least by 10 men, so you hardly see them. <laughs> so to change that, I started an organization called Women in Aerospace Europe together with a friend, a Simonetta di Pippo, who was in a similar situation, same thing. And um, we started to make the women visible, to connect them, to network, to help them grow in their positions, to help them grow in their careers, and to force the male community to realize that there are actually women in that space field working. 
This organization celebrates its 10th anniversary this year and we have more than 500 members and are very well connected worldwide. But still, no German woman had made it into space at yeah, that time. So I kept following my dream. I always wanted to fly into space. But why do we want to go to space? What, what is it? What's, what's driving us there? It's curiosity. It's inherent curiosity of mankind that we want to understand what's, what's out there, where we're coming from. As humans, we were very successful on this planet. We learned to walk on two legs. We learned to use our hands, build tools, invent the wheel, control the fire, understand the laws of physics, understand the laws of gravity even. But for thousands of years, we were stuck on this blue planet, like all-inclusive package tourists on a cruise ship, consuming everything that's growing there, consuming, we have everything, we have food, we have water, sunshine, everything's wonderful and nice. It took us hundreds of thousands of years to cultivate the earth, to grow food and to live from it. And it took us only some decades recently to spoil our oceans with garbage. And only recently we realized that, oops, we're over-consuming, actually, everything we have on this planet. And maybe we should start taking care of that. And this awareness only came through astronauts, through space flight. Once we saw this planet from outside, we understood how thin our atmosphere is and how tiny this planet is and that everything is connected here and that we need to start controlling our consumption and the way we use it. In the meantime, satellites have become part of our daily life. When you get up in the morning, you watch the weather forecast, it's coming from satellites. When you go to your car, you drive to work or to university, you see the traffic jams, you go around, the information is coming from satellites. At work or in university, you write emails to your colleagues around the globe, using satellites to transport the information. And in the evening, when you watch TV or probably Netflix these days, um, it's coming through satellites. So normally you don't realize and think about it. Um, you may have seen the recently this conference about space debris and maybe have a bit of a more awareness um, what we already are doing there in space and how full this space around the Earth already is. But all these Problems are man-made problems, and only through space flight we can solve these problems. But it's not only about improving life on Earth here, it's also about this understanding a wider view and seeing the world as part of the universe. And that's what astronauts do. Astronauts like Alexander Gerst recently, they give us this view from outside. They share their feelings, they share their impressions, and they all make us feel a bit more part of the universe. And that's why we need more astronauts. We need more women in space. We need to get the female impressions, the female feelings from space. And we need more female astronauts. Astronauts also stand for the wealth of a country. They stand for the high development of a country. The countries are proud of their astronauts. Countries um, who have flown astronauts into space are seen as influential and powerful, as high developed and visionary. And that's why we also need a German astronaut, at some, a German female astronaut in space to give women that feeling of being proud of we as women can actually achieve that, we can go to space. We need that as a role model for girls and women, and not only to inspire them for technical jobs and technical um, subjects at school, but also for their own self-esteem, for making them believe in their dreams, making them see that you can achieve big things. So that's why almost 50 years after 
more than 50 years after the first uh, woman at all was in space, I saw that still nothing was happening. Nobody took some, some measures to finally bring the first German woman into space. So I started an initiative myself. At that time, I was managing a space services and recruitment company. And I thought, OK, I just opened a job for the first female German astronaut and a call for applications. And I got more than 400 applications of fantastic women. Engineers, scientists, researchers, pilots. Um, I was really overwhelmed. And I did that very public with a lot of PR, just to show that in Germany, this type of women do exist, and that all these role models are out there. We then did a selection process um, in a similar way as it's done with the European Space Agency, um, psychological tests, medical tests, questionnaires, videos. Um, this was a meeting that we had with, we were gathering the top 90 candidates in Berlin. It was a fantastic meeting, fantastic, great women, fantastic atmosphere there. And we selected two candidates, Insa Thiele Eich, a PhD in meteorology and mother of three children. The last one was just born in October last year. And uh, Dr. Susanna Randall, a PhD in astrophysics. They both started a part-time training that we're organizing. Um, we have a retired astronaut trainer in our team um, on top of their normal jobs because we're still a private initiative. We're still almost not government funded. And um, we're now trying to get the financials together, trying to get companies on board that use us um, as brand, um, that use our mission as uh, identifying themselves with us. And um, we also try to convince government to step in and help us finance this mission. And on top of that, we started an education and outreach program right from the beginning. We went to schools, we did workshop in schools. We started to inspire girls for astronauts, inspire for mathematics, for computer sciences, for programming. We did workshops where they program little moon rovers or where they have to save the space station from an asteroid impact or things like that. And we immediately saw the difference that it makes when you have a woman standing in front of them inspiring them about that. It's, it's such a difference. It's really so nice to see. And we give presentations up and down, like today here. And in, with this, we created a media value of more than 100 million euros up to now with this project. So I think it's very worthwhile for industries, for companies to come in and use that um, visibility of the campaign. All that is only possible because the way spaceflight is conducted these days has changed dramatically. With Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Richard Branson coming in and building space companies, wanting to bring more people into space, talking about moon villages, Mars colonization, um, discovering outer space, and launching much more rockets with reusable boosters, spaceflight soon becomes affordable. It's still expensive, but it's, uh, it's turning into a different thing right now. And there are a lot of startup companies coming up in the space world right now. And that will change more, and that will open the door so that hopefully you and me can fly to space one day as well. But exactly if we're talking about that, if we're talking about moon bases, Mars colonies, it's clear we need more women in space. It's how can you start a colony? <laughs> Without having enough women there. So that's uh, the objective um, of, of our future. And that's one side of what we're, why we're doing that. It was only a very small moment in my life that brought me here. It was the moment where I saw the moon landing. And that inspired me all through my whole life. That drove my career, that made me what I am today. 
And that's what it's really about. That's what we want to do. We want to create these inspiring moments. And this is little Elin here from Bremen. I met her last October. She had a, yeah, she came up and said, I already have an astronaut suit. I'm going to become an astronaut. And <laughs> this is what it's about. We want to create these inspiring moments for girls to make them dream and to make them believe in their dreams. And this is so powerful, that can change the world. <laughs>